First off, that was an excellent sign-off sound, Joe. So, And so, this week is bookshelfy tour tour week. I already sort of did that on Sunday. I'm going to just sort of like show you the notable books on my bookshelf. So here we go. My first book I'm showing you not only because it was most conveniently placed on my desk here, but it is because it's a very awesome concept. It's zombies versus unicorns and it's there's a team of zomb of people who are in favor of the fact that zombies make for better storytelling and a team for unicorns of the same reasoning. They're all actually really good authors like relatively famous. Team Unicorn is edited by Holly Black, who co-wrote The Spiderwick Chronicles. Team Zombies edited by Justine Larbalestier, who I don't really know, but I've heard John Green talk about her, so it's gotta be something there. Uh, Maureen Johnson is on Team Zombie, and Garth Nix is on Team Unicorn, who- uh, Garth Nix is the bomb. Scott Westerfeld, who wrote one of the books you talked about, Joe, is on Team Zombie, and I, I am personally on Team Zombie because zombies are just badass. So what team are you on? Question time. This is a really awesome creative book. All the, all the short stories are actually like really good and creative. Like you would think that for so many stories about the same thing, there would be some repetitiveness, but r not really. They're all very different takes on zombie lore and unicorn lore. I feel ridiculous saying that. Zombies versus unicorns. All right, so this is stories for the nighttime and some for the day. It's a collection of short stories by Ben Lowry, who I had previously never heard about or known anything about until I got this book. I still don't really know who he is actually. These are probably the best short stories, except for possibly Ray Bradbury, that I've ever read. They're really weird, honestly. They're written in such a unique style that they're just extremely surreal, and they're like so deep, you could analyze it for hours. Like These are the type of, of stories that you would analyze in English class, except they're actually really, really good, and not like super wordy or anything. They're just like awesome to read and have so much meaning in each and every one. Like honestly, each one of these stories has close to, or equal amount of depth and stuff as a Harry Potter series. I know that's saying a lot, but I, I that's in my opinion. Maybe I'm stupid, but I think these are quite incredible stories. At least, at least a good number of them. I mean, some of them aren't as good as others, because that's how the world works. All extremely amazing! Stories for the nightmare <laughs> Stories for the nightmare time and some for the day. Stories for the night time and some for the day. That is what this book is. And you should read it today. It's not an advertisement. This book I haven't even read, but I'm just talking about it because Joe has the three ones that come after it in the series, and this is the first one. So Joe, I have the book you need, but unfortunately we live in different countries. It's hard to like throw books across oceans. If I could, I would. But I can't. I can't even throw a ball like 20 feet. This is The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Again, a collection of short stories about, as you might have guessed, Mars and humans going to Mars and the life of Martians on Mars. And it's actually, and they're all extremely excellent as Ray Bradbury is. He's probably the most like prestigious and renowned science, fi science fiction authors there is, or one of them at least. He's written novels and a bunch of short story collections. Also, The Illustrated Man, which I would say is better than this, but I can't find that right now. But The Martian Chronicles is still incredibly excellent. All the stories are very, very good, very thought-provoking. He was writing in the 60s, so again, a little bit outdated language, maybe, but they're all very good and not difficult at all. Martian Chronicles or anything by Ray Bradbury, all very, very good. Fahrenheit 451 is probably his most famous thing, you might have heard of it. Actually, no, I'm stupid. I found The Illustrated Man, so this is probably... My favorite stuff of Ray Bradbury, so there we go, shabam. <laughs> now going into more lighthearted fare, we have Calvin and Hobbes. If you have not read Calvin and Hobbes, I would highly, highly suggest it. It will vastly improve your life and the way you perceive your little children. This is my personal favorite collection of Calvin and Hobbes, the authoritative Calvin and Hobbes. The creator is Bill Watterson, and I have since collected almost, I think, every one of the, of the things, because I really like Calvin and Hobbes which you should too. In case you don't know, the, uh, to give you the lowdown, it's about a little six-year-old boy. He, for some reason, he's perpetually six, but that's the magic of comics. Who has a stuffed tiger named Hobbs, who he thinks is real. One of the best strips that ever graced our newspapers. I'm still very tired, but slightly less tired about it. Next thing we've got is The Looking Glass Wars. It's, it's a spin-off of through the Looking Glass and Alice in Wonderland and stuff by Frank Bedor, who I have no idea who he is again, but very good at need. It's a very awesome spin-off of uh, Alice in Wonderland. My favorite part, personally, is uh, the Mad Hatter equivalent, or Hatter Madigan, 
and he's like a complete badass. He has this spinning hat thing that he throws that sprouts blades, and he's like a total murderer, badass person. So that's pretty awesome. And 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 the card soldiers are like these machines that sort of just kill everyone and stuff. It's really just a dark like sort of. I want to say not really steampunkish. I don't know. All very good stuff though. It's it's a very interesting take on the classic story. And finally we have Infernal Devices by Philip Reeve. This is, I think, the third in the Hungry City Chronicles. The The premise basically for these is that cities are like these big traveling machines that eat up other cities and grow. Very awesome concept, as most of these books are. So that's my favorite stuff from my bookshelf. Uh, I'll give you a little snippety-doo of it again, because it is technically a bookshelf tour. So yes, this has been a splendor for his time. I hope you all have spectacular weeks. Your life becomes awesome-er than it was before. And that you live your life to the best. There's a strange force in your kids. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah.